We're here today at Giants in the Earth. We're here with Vivian Ahmed Brevik and her daughter Betty Schmidt. Betty is from Wyckoff. Vivian is from Mabel, but they're both originally from Spring Grove and they both attended and graduated from Spring Grove High School. My great grandfather was my favorite man because <laughs> when, when uh, he was taking care of me, I was just five years old. But I, he took me out to an ap apple orchard and he'd peel an apple and give me a slice and then I'd have a slice and I followed him around all over. And when he died, why they lifted me up to the casket so I could see that he was gone. But I couldn't understand it. But they had a white dove in there, I remember that the most. Oh really? It's Where was he from, Mom? Great Grandpa was from Gubransdal, Norway. Wow. <laughs> and we, I've been there where he was, where he was born. And there, of course, it doesn't show pictures here, but I, here's my great grandpa's here, and my grandmother's here, and my mother, and myself when I was little. Just taken in 1922. And when did he emigrate to the United States? That I don't remember. I have it on, written down, I'm sure, but he was quite young, you know. Vivian, can I have you point to which ones? Which? This is great grandpa, mm -hmm. Ole, Ole Mairi from Gubernstown, Norway. And my grandmother was born here in America, and so was my mother. But then I have uncles and aunts that were. Mm -hmm. I had grandpa. That's no, that's my dad. But oh well. well I don't yeah. know. Grandpa and grandma. I have a wedding picture of grandpa and grandma. You can. Oh yeah, that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this one? Yeah, that one. That's their wedding picture. That's our wedding picture. He was 19 when he came to America. And, and, that, he, and his name, Mom? Asli Dollar. And his, his, uh, he was 19 years old when he came. And he was a full-fledged carpenter, and that's what he was in Springfield until he died. Oh. Is there some more? Oh, show them the two houses that they were raised in. Oh. Um, they're underneath that one. Can you tell us a little bit more about your great-grandfather and his, his extra finger? Oh, oh, yeah, I can tell you about that. It's, uh, he was born with six fingers, and so was his brother, John. He moved to Canada, but I never met him. But he, he kept his six fingers, but my grandpa cut off one of his fingers so he could use gloves. The other one had to use mittens all his life. And another one, too. <clears throat> Is this the house that you're talking about? And this is where my husband grew up. Okay. And there's also this house. Yeah, that's what, that's our house in Beaver. It's where I grew up. Oh, wow. Yeah, show it to the camera. It's, it's a log cabin. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Did you have any indoor plumbing or electricity? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we oh. didn't have any of that. And you had how many in the living in the house? How many were in that house? Well, we had seven children. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> in one house. Yeah, three brothers and three sisters. Okay. And I learned to play the organ on one of those things that you step on. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Were you the youngest in your family? Oldest. That's okay. Okay, now, Mom, your mother, your mother's family, though, came to America, uh, what was her name? To Your mom's mom was Tyreen Erie or something like that? That's Nor, that's Nor, that's Amat again. Torina, Torina. Yeah, that's your grandma. Eri, Eri. Your grandma, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. she came from from Bergen, Nor Bergen, Norway. Okay. And uh, that, I can't remember the year, but grandpa came from from Ringerica, and he was seven years old when he came to America. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, Osley Dollar? Osley Dollar was 19 when he came. That's the one picture of. And Osley had 11 brothers yeah. and mm -hmm. sisters. Yeah. Wow. That's why they had to come to America, because they couldn't raise that, raise a crop for 11 children in America, so they went to come to America. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, born he was, in 1876, and he was a good carpenter here yeah. all the time in Spring yeah. Grove, wasn't he? He was a main carpenter in Spring Grove for years and years. Yeah, and now you've got, uh, your mother's mom was Clara Myrie? Clara <coughs> Myrie, that's great-grandpa's daughter. Right, and she came from where in Norway? She was born here in America. She, well, it says, um, Clara Myrie was born in 1879 to Ole and Anna Myrie, and they came from uh, Gubrans de Ballen, Norway? Gubrans de Ballen, but that's, that, that's, I know where they lived in, in Spring Grove. 
And she had nine brothers and sisters. Yeah. Wow, big family. <laughs> <laughs> they all did back then, isn't that something? Yeah. Where did they live in Springgrove? Um, it's hard to tell you, but you know where Springgrove is, where you turn to go to Eitzen? There's where they lived on that corner. Oh, the really? boulders are the oh. boulders are still there from the house. Well, oh. that's right. I remember you saying that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then where Osley Dollar lived. Osley Dollar lived in your house where you lived. But they don't know that. Uh, <laughs> you have to tell it's, me the address. It's um, they lived. Well, let's see. It's one twenty-five. One twenty-five First Avenue Southeast. Yeah. The house is between Gary Glashrud and Fred Onsgar. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's where Osley lived, and then tell how your mom got it. Yeah, mom inherited the house, and when they died. Yep, and then uh, so and then I lived there after that. I lived there for. My, here's my ten dad years. standing on the front porch. Oh, show the camera. Yeah. Yes, please. Melvin Amat. Yep, that's his house here in Springer. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I uh, I have that little joke, you know, like say I was an Amat, and my mother was a dollar, so I'm half a dollar. <laughs> spelled, spelled different. Spelled Half different. a dollar. <laughs> and and uh, this is your oh, Graham, that big picture over there of her whole family. Oh, that's, yeah. that's mom's whole family. That's, that's Vivian yeah. Brevig's whole family. That's Vivian, Doris, Baki, Raymond Amit, Norman Amit, and that's uh, Grandma, Regina Amit, Grandpa, uh, Melvin Amit, and artists. Ang Balson, Alden Amit, and Ion Johnson. So that was their seven children. Mom's siblings. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Big family. <laughs> yeah. Again. <laughs> and what about this picture? Are these your children? Yes, that's my children. Okay. I made pajamas for them out of flower sacks. Oh, them in order, but we, that's okay. We were known as Steps. <laughs> Mavis, Bevan, Mary Lou, Betty Jean, Bernice, Fortis, and our little sister artist was later, so she's not on there. She was born eight years later. And of course, mom sewed us everything we wore until we graduated almost, you know. They're all pajamas out of those feed sacks that we used to get for chicken feed. Oh! <laughs> and flower sacks, yeah. And it saved some money, though. <laughs> oh, it did. And then one Easter, I made dresses for all the girls out of that pretty pink flowers on it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we had a dog that was kind of vicious, and the cattle, she walked to the barn right after Easter, <laughs> and here the cow thought it was a dog, so she kicked her and she landed in the gutter. I never got that dress clean again. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all green. Okay. Uh, oh, and you said, um, yeah, oh, where did Grandpa and Grandma live? Your mom and dad. Where did your mom and dad live? Bay Bridge. Yep, they farmed there for quite a while. They had 80 acres, I believe. Uh, it turned out to be 180 toward last, after, he, he, after he cut all the trees off. Okay, that's... That's where I grew up. Yep, that's the house you lived in. Yeah, and the house you, is in Mabel now. We showed that, I think. Mom. They uh, fixed it over again, but it didn't turn out good, you know. Um, <laughs> it, and it was too full of termites. Oh, mm -hmm. no. Yeah, see, it's all covered with other stuff so it didn't last. Some of them saved, uh, saved their houses that way. Mm -hmm. And your mom, you said grandpa used to do, um, used to dip grandma's curls in ink? Oh, that was in school. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mom and dad went to the same school. So that was a way to yeah. and get her, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he used to tease her by dipping her curls in, in the ink wells. Oh. What color of hair did she have? Black. And it was real curly. Oh. <laughs> Probably couldn't tell it. <laughs> and my, uh, well, my mom and dad had real curly hair. So, for this, my son, you know him, oh, and he's nice. got real curly hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, uh, he still has curly hair. Um, I should get another picture of our little sister, Artie, Mom. I don't, yeah, don't want to leave her out. What are those pictures of? This is from high school. Oh. This is my prom night, and there's some oh. my classmates, and this is my first dress I made. Oh, very cool. And, and Carol Gauss had a borrowed, and Connie Dollar's dress I borrowed for, for the prom. Oh, who did you go to prom with? My brother, my, no, my boyfriend. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh. 
Don't oh, well. confuse those two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And th this is, uh, that's nothing to do with this, but this is my pen pal in Norway that I wrote to for 27 years. Oh! <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, that was neat. That's kind of how you kept up on your Norwegian, I guess. Yeah. Huh? But our Norwegian mm. was entirely different. She was in northern Norway and I'm from middle Norway. Oh. But I was able to talk with her when we yeah. met. She came to Oslo to meet me when I was there, 200 miles. Wow. And we both cried at first when we met each other, and, she, and then she cried again, and I thought, now what did I say, something wrong? Oh. No, she said, I understand you. Oh, cool. <laughs> she couldn't, I didn't know if she could understand my Norwegian, but she did. But I was tired every single night because I was so all in from trying to Norwe talk Norwegian after having spoken for 50, 50 years. Yeah, well, I bet it was good review for you, though. Oh, it, was, it was fun. <laughs> it was fun, though. I enjoyed it a lot. Do you have to share with them how Grandpa's cousin came um, from Norway to visit? Yeah, my uncle, Uncle Knut Dollar, he went to Norway when he was 90 years old. And my cousin, my cousin, and she, she's still living too, she's 94. She said, I had, I had to hunt for Grandpa all over. She said, I couldn't <laughs> find him. He just wanted to see everything at once. <laughs> my dad, I asked Grandpa, my grandpa then, that's a wedding picture my grandpa. Oh. Okay. And I asked him if he wouldn't like to go back again sometime when uh, to see his mom and dad. And he said, in no way would I want to go back. She was 100 then. Um, and he said, she was 37 when I left home. Mom, so. that's your parents. Um, that's your parents' wedding pictures. Yeah. And, and dad's parents' wedding these, pictures. These are, this is dad's parents and this is my parents here. Their wedding picture. Yeah. Hold it more straight, Mom, so they can. 1914, okay. 1921, it looks like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. And then uh, Grandpa's cousin came from Norway to ask Grandpa if he could adopt you. Oh, that's a different story. That's on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> we had a cousin that lived in, in Russia, and the, he was married, but he didn't have a family. So he came to my folks and was wondering if they could adopt one of us kids because they didn't have a family. And Elvin says, none of mine are, no, not Elvin. My dad, Melvin, mm -hmm. none of mine are for adoption. So <laughs> I'm glad I didn't go to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> he thought that, he, yeah, he thought he could have one of you because it he had seven and he had none. Yeah. <laughs> that's not the way it works. <laughs> that's, that's not the way it works. This is my husband's house. He, that's the log house too. Oh wow! It's still standing, but mm -hmm. it's not very good shape. In Blackhammer, yeah. okay. <clears throat> North Blackhammer, where we lived all our yeah. life, yeah, as children. Yeah, great grandpa delivered me, and then he uh, baptized me right away, and then he said that they better name her right away. He said because she's not going to live. So I got, I was named Vivian right away. The nicest one they could think of. They said I often wondered where that name came from, <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Uh, and then Mom, um, Grandpa Amit, your dad, yeah, built the built the Spring Grove schoolhouse. My my dad helped. I mean, my dad helped build the schoolhouse in Spring Grove in 1921. Wow! When built the high school. And what happened to him? <laughs> he almost lost his life. He was hauling mortar across this up on top, and uh, they couldn't take it right away, so he had to stand for a while, and then you know, mortar sticks to the wheelbarrow. So he dumped it over and the wheelbarrow went down, so he, he went with it and he got caught by his wedding ring. He was hanging by his wedding ring until they saved him. I still have the wedding ring. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Grandpa. He was such a uh, neighbor. He was a far, farmer. What do you call that? That to everybody. Everybody had trouble with calving or colting or pigs or whatever. He always went to all the neighbors and helped them. And, and he was a barber. He cut hair for everybody. And I made him an apron and it said haircut and two and haircut and shave two bits. That's what it said on the apron. Ber Bernice has it now. And and he uh, um with his land, his little farm, he what do you call it? Dug all the he, stumps out and the yeah. whatever they call it to give him more land. He gave, he weighed 80, 80 or so when he came there, but it was 130 by the time he got all cut up. Yeah, and of course you only had horses for yeah. a long time. Yeah. Now Grandpa went to D.C. Oh, that was a fun part. 
We took um, mom and dad to DC when we visited two daughters over there, Mavis and Bev, I could tell. And uh, El he never lost his uh, accent. He's got such a deep accent from Norway. <laughs> and every time we met somebody, he said, when did you come from the old country? And he answered that so many times. <laughs> They had more fun with him, but yeah, he really did have a cute accent. Yeah, <laughs> it was a really deep one too. He never did lose it. I, s I thought I lost mine, but they tell me I haven't lost mine either, so I don't know where it is. Well, but we're just so used to it. But yeah, yeah, you do. They can, uh, where I live, they can tell me. They can tell me I'm different. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they can tell me I'm different. <laughs> we I lived in California, Mom, and they and right away those people t told me that I was Norwegian. Yeah, isn't that weird? <laughs> I mean, what is it? Do we look different? <laughs> no, it's an accent. I suppose, but I didn't think I had one either. There's our family, Mom. Because Artie, you know, was missing on some of these other pictures. Oh, it's Artie on this one? Right here, right here, Mom. Oh, okay. And she's our, she was, she was our fun little girl that came last and <laughs> a few years later, so we had a lot of fun with her. Yeah. She's the youngest. You gotta hold it straight, It was Mom, just so like raising see. a single child again because all the others are gone and she was, came last. And she had, we had more fun with her because I had more fun with her. I had more time. Yeah, she, I didn't she have was time. eight the other years kids, after Fortis. Yeah, the other kids all came and played together. Got. Oldest, Mavis, and our brother, Fortis, and our sister, Bev Ann, our sister, Mary Lou, our sister, Artis, and our sister, Bernice. So, Artis um, was the one that was born eight years later. That's yeah, why she was kind of raised like a single was, child. She was our little pal. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> yeah, we just we, we just loved it. We thought it was because you know we lived out in the boondocks, where a dead end, you know, ten miles out of town, and there was there was no um, uh, no kids to play with very much, and certainly never to babysit because it was so far away. So we had a lot of fun with her. Now, Elvin's mother lived with us for about twenty five years. Yeah, that's that's right. unusual. But when when his father died. Elvin's father died. He says, you have to take our mom as long as she lives. So she lived with us for, well, it was 25 years in all, but she lived with Maynard part of the time, but they didn't, didn't get along over there. So um, they came to our house. <laughs> I thought that was funny. We had seven children. They had only four. Oh. <laughs> she liked our seven better. Yeah. I shouldn't say that, but and that's the way it sounded. <laughs> <laughs> and, it was, and it was a real, you know, and, and she was, uh, well, how many, how many new wives would accept living with a mother-in-law the yeah. whole time either? But so, but I mean, mom was so easy going, yeah. So it was well, real easy. They got I learned really. a lot from from her yeah. too because I didn't learn much from my mother because outside helping dad all the time, he did milking and right. chopping the pigs and taking care of all the stuff outside. Well, mm -hmm. so I never helped her in the house, but. I learned a lot from Dad. Dad was a wonderful teacher, too. We had talked about the Bible and everything, too, while we were working and doing oh, things all the time. Oh, I know. He was such a religious man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were really good people. But you know, not too many women can live together all the time, and us children never, ever heard arguing. We never heard arguing. Never. No. We just never did, so that was really... The other family of us, I shouldn't say it, but they argued a lot, so they call over and wonder, what do you do when you argue? And us? When you fight. No, I said, we never fight. I said, we can argue a little bit, but we never fight. <laughs> no, no, we never heard that either. And people don't believe it, but no, we never did. <laughs> Must have been at night, probably. Betty, do you remember any good stories about your grandmother? My grandmother. When she lived with you? Oh, oh, yeah. Um, they, whenever we got home from uh, country school, you know, we all brought our dinner pails to work, I mean, to school, <laughs> to school every day. And, and of course, we always had the smell of wonderful, fresh made food, you know, because mom and her made the bread by, you know, from scratch and donuts and everything you can think of. And so when we all six would march home from school, you know, together, then um, they would have all these, she'd have all these fresh donuts sitting on the cupboard. <laughs> and we'd all, we'd all walk up there and, you know, try to take them and she'd go, you know, <laughs> wait till supper, and then we'd go ask mom, <laughs> and then we'd go take them. <laughs> yeah, you know, she was really a good lady. She was yeah. really a, a nice lady and a big yeah. help to all of us. I learned a lot from her because I didn't from my mother because I was also helping my dad all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did all the chores and stuff. And yeah, and um, 
And you sewed everything we ever made, you yeah. know, till we, you sewed everything but her, you made everything but her shoes and underclothes. Yeah, I wish I could make shoes too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And show the doll that you make, oh. Mom. Hey, you made a lot of dolls, it sounds like. She, she had wonderful hobbies. I made 200 of those, yeah. but yeah. they weren't all like this one. No. The same pattern, just yeah. different yeah. colors for yeah. nationalities. Yeah. And how many quilts did you make? Well, I can't remember that. That's too many. But I mean, hundred, it's hundred, about a hundred. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever sell any of your quilts? Oh yes, sold a lot of quilts, and, and I gave a lot of them away too. I gave a quilt to each one that got married, one, uh, grandchildren when they got married. Cool. No, each child that got married. <laughs> I can't say grandchildren, grand, each child. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess I know. I must. I gotta have more memories of Grandma, but it's like. It's been so many years, I'm losing my mind. Well, there's one thing though, too. I always had a babysitter at home when we wanted to go someplace. Of course, we didn't take all your kids shopping at one time. That was too much oh, work. I could it, imagine. <laughs> if we misbehaved, she would say, I'm going to tell your father. <laughs> <laughs> and dad was strict, but he was kind. So, I mean, we, but we were, but we still, you know, respected and feared yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Where did you go shopping? Well, like Spring Grove mostly, but if we had big things to shop for, we'd go to Spring uh, La Crosse. And that wasn't very often, of course. I go more often there now than I used to. One, one of my doctors. One of my memories of that is is that my dad took um, all five of us girls because Artie was too small yet. He took all of us shopping to get our school stuff, and when we and and, and mom wasn't with for some reason, but so all of us girls, you know, were picking up our personal items we needed in the bras and all that type of thing, you know, and then dad comes through the checkout counter and all of us girls are coming with all of our, <laughs> our things and she's going, oh, <laughs> she just couldn't believe that a father would be with all of this <laughs> women stuff and then he just, he just kept on with his business and paid her and didn't pay a bit of attention. <laughs> yeah. uh, we do have a lot of memories, we just can't remember half of them, I guess. Well, it's pretty much to remember in so many years. We always marveled that seven kids could be raised on a farm and, and no serious accidents <clears throat> because farming is yeah. dangerous with all the stuff that... We didn't have a bad accident until after Bev left home and, and somebody went to red light, red to red light and she was in a body cast for how many weeks? Oh, Bev. Bev yeah. had a car accident in yeah. B.C. where she lived. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, so we were all very lucky. We had... I guess us, if us seven kids get together, which we do every year, we have a siblings weekend, and all we do is share memories of our childhood, and, and, and all we do is laugh for two days. I mean, because is, it is so fun. Can you show that picture? Oh, yeah, that's, one, that's our last siblings weekend. Huh. Make shirts? My sister ordered them so that they all said, uh, is that okay? Or? They all say, um, uh, what is it? What happens between sisters stays with sisters. <clears throat> and my brother forgot his shirt, which said, and I'm the brother and I'm not responsible for them. Or something like that. <laughs> and he got asked, he got asked all his life, isn't it, isn't it terrible to be the only brother? Doesn't that really bother you? Portis? Yep. Um, <laughs> he says, never has, never has. Yeah, he loves all his sisters. Yep, he is, he's always been our... He's been every one of our shoulders whenever we've, you know, needed somebody or wanted to talk to, although we all are for each other, but I mean, he's, you know, it's like he just took that yeah. place and, yeah. He's really a good guy. <clears throat> and I, and uh, the three oldest kids, I remember when we were little, I was too little, but the three oldest ones, one of our favorite stories is that they climbed up the windmill. Oh. <laughs> and of course, you know, that was really... S scary and not safe because they could have only been what mom five eight, five I don't remember six five, five and four or something, something like, like that. that and I remember Elvin walked out there and he was just as calm as could be and I thought well how can he handle it that calm he said, they had he said I have to because if I scare him they'll probably fall down this way they all climbed down all by themselves <laughs> yeah and, and the punishment they got was they put him in the shut him in the granary door uh, granary and what an awful place to put him 
but it's so itchy in there, you know. Well, he just wanted to teach him, you know. And uh, so he went back a little later to listen in on him, and Mary Lou was the mother. She said, well, I'll find a sack, and we can all lay on the sack tonight. Because <laughs> they thought they were there for the night. <laughs> and my dad was peeking through the holes and cracks in the boards, you know, just keeping an eye on them to see how they were doing. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, he finally, of course, let him out, you know. And he gave him all a bath in the, in the water, in nice warm water in the sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. <clears throat> we, had a lot of, we had a lot of fun growing up. <laughs> and then I remember another time, it wasn't so nice, but um, we had the barn, we did milking and stuff, and heard somebody shaking the door on outside. And I thought, well, who should be shaking the door at this time of the night? We were milking. And here artists are standing, not artists, Mavis was standing there in her panties. She said, the house is on fire. And so, of course, Elvin took his jacket off and wrapped her up and called her, brought her back in the house again to see what was the matter. And um, the icing glass had broken. The flames were flicking in the ceiling from the, she thought the house was on fire. Oh, well, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a fire, but he had to bring her in and tell her we couldn't leave her out there anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she thought sure it was on fire because she see it so well in the ceiling, you know. Oh. Yeah. Because the icing glass was broken, so the flickers would show in the ceiling. Oh, I'm sure every family has a lot of memories. That's very yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm interested. When you milked cows, did you start milking by hand? Oh yes. How many cows did you have? Well, we had only about 25. And but what kind were they? Oh, uh, brown Swiss, big ones. <laughs> Yeah, she was out there with him all the time. We never had a, never had a bull. We, he almost got killed by a bull when he was about 14. So we never had a bull. We had use artificial semination. So we had... Yeah, bull. Dad got his ribs broken, right, Mom? Yeah, he had ribs, ribs broken. broken. <clears throat> he had, his face was scrubbed off. He never had a beard on this. Well, I can't remember what side it is, but they never had a beard there because they couldn't, wouldn't grow. And uh, all of us, uh, all of us children milk cows. Yeah, starting by eight years old. Milk, all of us milk cows by hand until we graduated, except artists. You know, she was behind us, so. No, come to think of it, Dad got a milking machine when I graduated. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I thought, wow, I'm really going to be missed. Well, we had a bull tank <laughs> long before that. <laughs> we had a bull tank long before that because she gets yeah. all milked. So then when it got so that the kids started leaving home, we had to buy a machine and so they milked the cows for us because they don't like somebody else milking them every other day. So then of course poor Artie, as the last one, eight years apart, she got to do it alone for eight years. But you know, but it was carrying the milk from the milkers to the tank, of course. But yeah, but yeah, we, yeah, we all, yeah, I, Dad said, well, I got a lot of good hands out here. I don't need a milking machine yet. <clears throat> So we were one of the last ones to get that in our area. We had grandchildren come over there, and I thought, well, you, don't you want to come to the barn? No, she said, I don't want to come to the barn. And I said, yeah, I think you'll like it. <laughs> so we walked up to the barn with me, and here the cows were laying down and peaceful, and the cat was sleeping on top of the cow, and she said, my, how quiet it is in here, she said. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, were cons they were quiet, you know, but they got noisier after a while. <laughs> Did you have any other animals besides cows? Did you have ducks or chickens? We had chickens. And rabbits. And rabbits. I raised over a hundred rabbits. I don't know how many I raised in there, but I canned them all the time. So <laughs> last, last time I butchered, I had hundred at one time. Oh. <laughs> they, they were very good, but, got, got, but a lot of people don't like to hear that, that we butchered them. Yeah, it was hard meat. to butcher them the first but, ones. Oh, because they're so darling. They were so yeah. cute, you know. We had two pair. But it sure got to be many. They were so many at Very a time. short time. Isn't that something? I bet they multiplied. <laughs> they sure multiplied. And then we had to quit that too because the rats started coming into the holes. We couldn't shut up the hole small enough for a rat and they started eating our babies. So then we had to quit. Ooh. So which are the last 100? 100. I have the table. I'll picture of them taking all the table. Oh. And well, you, you butchered all year you know I mean we just lived off the land in yeah. those days there was there was nothing from that was brought in a store except peanut butter cheese flour sugar very little otherwise you butter. You, you raised it you canned it you yeah butchered it you ate it yeah 
Uh, so we really did eat good. I mean, yeah, for uh, 10 people in the house all the time, we really did eat good. You bought your own butter? Uh, I think we turned our own butter. Oh, you churned your own butter, okay. Yeah, not, not, when, not, not when we were there, but I mean, then you know, you just bought it from your milk, from your ma milk hauler, yeah. because they would have it. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sure you did, John. When I was a kid, I churned butter a lot. Right, yeah. strong. <laughs> it wasn't a fun job to do. Oh. I, I always waited for it to clot, you know, so it'd start pretty soon. I hear the dumps, then I know the butter's coming. What, what does rabbit taste like? Tastes like chicken. Chicken, okay. A little, a little bit, bit. bit like chicken. Only yeah. they don't have ribs. You can't use the ribs. That's yeah. Too, that's nothing on the ribs. They, you know. they were good. Yeah. yeah. They're really, really good. So you could you make like anything you made chicken with. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you could make oh, yeah. rabbit. You yeah. Could use rabbit, excuse me. Yeah. yeah. I kind of think we should have just raised more chickens. Well, you didn't have very many <laughs> chickens. They didn't like chickens. <laughs> oh, is that right? Oh, to take care of, you mean, or yeah. something. Oh, the rabbits were easier, yeah. Easier to take care of. The rabbits were in the chicken coop, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have any wild animals that were a threat to? No. Coon. Coon. Just in the fall. He ate our sweet corn. Hmm. We put traps for him, but we never caught him. They always beat us. <laughs> And then, uh, and then, uh, Dad had a. Uh, see, Dad dated you in the nineteen forties. I mean, in the, what's that Model A? The nineteen fifteen first car. Okay, nineteen fifteen Ford Model A. Dad dated you in that, mm -hmm. but you weren't married in that, right? No, no. But anyway, many years later, my brother got to buy it um, because uh, it came up for auction. And so he realized that was mom and dad's car, so he went out there and he bought it. So now he's got it in his garage in Spring yeah. Grove here. Cool. Oh, and then and then he had it repainted so that it looked the original, you know, real nice again. And then he, he drove it out to the Black Hammer for their 60th anniversary and parked it on the lawn. So we got pictures of them standing by it again after 60 years. I did. Well, I didn't take that one long, did I? You know, I no. thought I had it too, no. but I don't know if I did. And, um, he had more fun with the car because he told the kids to get in and he'd give them a ride. And they all started looking for the seat belts. Of course, there weren't any of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> seat belts. Could you tell us how you met your husband? Oh, he says, he has one way and I have another. <laughs> <laughs> they all do. <laughs> well, I met him when I went to high school. He was working on the streets, pouring cement along the, in the highways in, right around the schoolhouse. And that's I told him, Good morning, many, many mornings before I knew who he was. In Spring Grove here, yeah. But my dad knew him. I didn't know that. His dad, they knew each other in, from church, but they were in Norwegian, you know, both of them, so. And that's a funny thing, too. I tell you about when we visited in Norway. Uh, we visited our relatives out there, and we, our cousin, her, her name was Tula, they call her Tula anyway, and she said, I have to see what the men are doing. And she went out there and she, said, she came in laughing and laughing and I said, what's so funny? It isn't funny. She said, it's just cute. She said, my husband is talking Norwegian and your husband's talking in English. And they answered everything just the way they were supposed to. Because <laughs> Elvin knew all the Norwegian, but he couldn't talk it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so when did Dad get brave enough to ask you out? Oh, I don't know. It's... One night I went to a restaurant, three of us girls went to a restaurant and here those three men came in there and went home with them that night. They took us home anyway. I mean, yeah, took them home. Yeah, took, <laughs> took, uh, took, Nowadays they took home grandma's, them, grandma's place. Yeah. I lived at grandma, you know, at grandma oh, grandma's. Sure. Oh, sure. Oh, right up here you mean? Yeah. Oh, grandpa, okay, grandma's, I yeah. see. Otherwise, mm -hmm. yes. Otherwise there was weeks that they couldn't get together oh, because of the roads. Yeah. yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, now what's dad's story about meeting you? Well, he just says something funny. <laughs> well, that's let's have it. <laughs> he said he got stuck in the butt, stuck in the cement and pulled me out. Well, that wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know he used to have a lot of little different stories because he'd like to tease you. Yeah. And say something like, "Oh, I knew she was giving me the eye. I figured, you know." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> and she was so bashful. She was scared of her own shadow. You know. <laughs> we had uh, Del or not Delores. Shauna. Interviewed me one time, Elvin and I told about us how we met and stuff oh, for like college. that. That's more fun to listen to that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I haven't each got that long. Each though. other, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Oh, here's our wedding picture. Oh. My sister is so cute on here. She's 
flower girl. Oh, let me hold it up for oh, a moment. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if the light hits it right or if that's bad. Of course, there again, maybe you want to scan it or something. I don't know. She was seven years old and she carried petals all the way up the aisle. <laughs> and then she turned around and looked and she saw the mess she made, so she quit. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess you'd have to tell who they are, Mom. I guess I don't know. Yeah. This is my husband, Alvin, his brother, Maynard, and my cousin, Mar Mike. And this is his wife, and this is my sister. She's not very good right now. She's, but you'd have to show that to them, Mom. She's Alzheimer's. <clears throat> Oh, that's not. Oh, that's so, not. who's that guy, Mom? Mike Larson. Mike Larson. I wanted Harlan was Lausanne, Harlan but... Today. Mike Larson. He's a cousin. Maynard Brevig, Dad, Elvin Brevig, Mom, and Gyneth Brevig, and Doris Spocky, her sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, here's one, Mom, of you and Dad. I don't know, what were you oh, dating? Oh, this is taken. The first four, Fourth of July we had together. Was, your, oh. was it your first date? First Fourth of July. Well, oh, the first Fourth of July. Were you okay. married yet? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Show that one, Mom. That's pretty neat. And the funny part of it, Maynard and Guinness went with us, and she had a dress almost like mine. I saw that. Yeah, I had a picture of that. That's cute. These are all my pictures here, aren't and, they? So we won't pick and up And when you and Dad else. got you and Dad got married in 1941. Yeah. And um, that. Yeah, and uh, you li you lived out there. Yeah, right after you got married, you guys had to live together. We lived for mm -hmm. nine months together. Yeah, both couples. Because we didn't buy our farm. We didn't buy our farm until afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of work, walk across the field, work on the bar, <laughs> bar and get our farm ready. But we lived there sixty-two years, wow. or we were married sixty-two years. That is, I didn't live there that long, but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you. Uh, Lived on our farm for many years, and then you moved to Spring Grove out at the Casterston home. Yeah, there. Mm -hmm. I have 15 grandchildren, but 24 great grandchildren. But wow. I lost one grandchild two weeks ago. Great. Little Alexis Clue that died from cancer. Oh. That's five Alexis. years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that. That was too bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was kind of a hard thing. Then last. Two weeks ago, then we went to the Methodist Church. I like that because I went to Methodist when I lived in California, mm -hmm. and they came and talked to us. And then they talked about Alexis too. So Bernice stood up. She said, "That's my granddaughter, and this is a great grandma." So the uh, pastor came and talked to us both of them afterward. I think that was good for Bernice yeah. because she just she just left out of so many things. So, Mom, uh, what would you tell people that you feel makes up? a good marriage and a life together when you were married 61 or two well, years? 62 years. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of love all the time, never any fighting or anything. They said, don't you ever fight? And I said, no, we never do. We can disagree sometimes, but we never fought. Mm -hmm. and I think the big key word is respect. Yeah, well, that's true. You have true. respect yeah. for each other, otherwise yeah. it doesn't work very well. And I had wonderful parents too, so. Yeah, yep, you sure did. I have one more question. If I oh, can. Okay. We were talking about food before, and I was wondering what would be a, a normal Christmas meal or a normal Easter meal for you? Well, for Christmas, we'd have lutefisk, you know. lutefisk. <laughs> <laughs> lutefisk and lapsa, usually, which I made myself. Wow. Lutefisk is so expensive now, you can't hardly dare to buy it. Buy it. <laughs> yeah. But Joy Moon, our nurse over there, she cooked lutefisk for us one time, and it was delicious the way she fixed it. She did a real good job. <laughs> yeah, it's she, she's we, a registered nurse over there. We just loved it when, you know, when, um, <clears throat> like I said, there was always wonderful food in those days. I think because they devoted their life to feeding their families. They, you know, they didn't work out of the home somewhere else, so they were there to make all the good food. You know, and so we we were fed very well. <laughs> Lefsa was one of our favorites, and of course, Mom made everything. Strudel, rosettes, lefsa. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. They always ask us about the bathroom. Well, we didn't have a bathroom either. We oh. had. We had to walk out outside. Yeah. It was a little two holder. <laughs> yeah. Or was it a three holder? I can't remember. Oh, two. Remember. It's oh. two. <laughs> you had to be friendly. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but then that's. Another experience that we had was um, 
Well, that doesn't include in the history, of course, but uh, um, Alvin's mother was sitting there by the window and all of a sudden she saw a man come walking down this, well, kind of a grade there, you know, to the house, and she fainted away. And I thought, now what happened? And here a relative of hers had come and she thought he was dead. And to see him come walking down, oh. she just fainted away. Wow. Well, that it is. was Dada's husband. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Why did she think he was dead? She hadn't heard anything from him for years and years. But she lived in California. But then they got together, three sisters, after 35 years, they all got together, three of them, and went to California together. Well, that was the or sad. Or Washington State, wasn't that, it? Yeah, that was the sad thing in those days, though. Yeah. You know, they had no cars and no Social Security for money when yeah. they were that, you know, old, elderly. So, yeah, you just didn't get together with family because Hadn't they all lived far sisters for 35 years. That seemed kind of, kind of funny. Boy, and, that's sad, yeah. Yeah. enough damage and all. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was very interesting. <laughs> but I always go back to my great-grandpa because there's where I got my start. And he was, <laughs> yeah, you have fond memories, Mom, of your great-grandpa. Yeah, that's I do. Very vivid ones, especially since you were so young. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> unusual for great, you know. Yeah. But, you know, my daughter, I mean, she's my son's little child is named after Mom. Corey Campshire. Yeah. Uh, his little girl is 11 now, and he named her after mom. Her name is Vivian. She was born on my birthday. Vivian Grace, born on her birthday. Oh, that's really cool. But funny. he was going to name her Vivian anyway, but it was kind of cool, yeah, that yeah. it happened to be on her birthday because he just, uh, he just said, I always admired my grandma so much, and she always said grace at every meal. So, Vivian Grace. That's really great. <laughs> that's how he did that. <laughs> Oh, I should show you the spoon. My relative over in Norway made this one oh, for me. That is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. This spoon I bought after we had been on top of a mountain. Oh, in and Norway? I bought, yeah, I bought this uh, to remember it by, but I can't pronounce it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't pronounce it anymore. What a shine. Well, it looks pretty hard to pronounce. Yeah, because the letters are all run together. Yeah. You know? yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. So. It's very pretty though. You have a few yeah. neat things. Oh, she had a lot of beautiful spoons. She had a big spoon collection. A lot of them were from I Norway. I have 150 of them, but wow. they're not all from Norway. I've gone all over the country. <laughs> Did you want to show the, the outfit you made, Mom? Oh. The banag or whatever you call that? Banag, yeah. Yeah. Well, I made that myself, so. It's a vest. And uh, I used to, I found some There they are. Oh. Earrings from Sweden. Oh. I put them on there for decorations. They're very pretty. <laughs> I love Norwegian. I love Scandinavian. Yeah, jewelry. I did. She got that picture of you wearing that. <clears throat> yeah, oh. here I'm wearing it here. I made the apron too, but and the skirt too, but it didn't take them along because that's just plain. Oh yeah. I guess I, guess I got the apron yeah, along. But, well. Yes. Oh yes, I did. It's very pretty. I was a seamstress all my life. <laughs> so between making wedding dresses and all that stuff, oh, I, yeah, I did. I made, our, made a lot of toys wedding and dresses stuff. And our, yep, every dress. You made all, their, all of your daughter's wedding dresses? Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, they didn't make wedding dresses for all of them. I made Mary Lou's. Well, you made a couple, yeah. I made Mary Lou's. Yep. She wa wanted 18 buttons on the back, and she want I made loops for all those 18 buttons. Oh, <laughs> took me a long time. Yes, and, and then Grandma was in the hospital in the rest home by that time, so we took Mary Lou over there with her wedding dress, so Grandma could see it before yeah. she got married. That was in June. And then, uh, and then uh, I wore it too. I, yeah, because it was you know so nice. You'd like to wear it more yeah. than once. Yeah. Um, I made many wedding dresses. Oh, and then uh, all seven of us children, well, six of us for sure. Artie was little, but she joined in later. But we've been singers our whole life. And so uh, they, mom and dad had us singing every time somebody needed some program, mm -hmm. whether it's 4 H or Lutheran Brotherhood or, I mean, let's see, would that be what it was? Not, no, Sounds Luther like League. Luther League. Yeah, Luther League. No matter what was coming up or the fair, we all sang. And she made us all identical dresses mm -hmm. for that. <laughs> And then we sang on TV one time. We were on, uh, it was Lindy called Shannon Show. That, and it was called Midland Music Time. And yeah. so then we were, um, we were on, uh, yeah, 
televised a couple of times, and we were in high school at that time. And then when we, and they televised it, but then we got back to Spring Grove to C&D in time to that little restaurant they had, mm -hmm. where we could see it on TV ourselves. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. Very cool. And, and of course, Fortis is the one that has karaoke, you know, he still does that. Well, he sang with you all the time till he got left alone. Yeah. <laughs> then he started by, him, by himself. Yeah, yeah. He's thinking of retiring too, but he still <laughs> likes it so well. Yeah, he doesn't do karaoke as much, but he sure did for years there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He sang at my sister's wedding. Did he? Mm -hmm. oh. He went to Norway and sang at the wedding too. You know, remember the girl that they had for... Uh, oh. Uh, exchange yeah, for exchange mm -hmm. student. Her name was Nina. What was her name? Nina mm -hmm. something anyway. Nina, that's all we knew. And he said, when I get married, will you come over and sing at my wedding? And he did. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of cool. And they came to visit them too then. So I met oh. their family. Yeah. Well, she really became like a daughter. I mean, living yeah. there a year, she was such a nice girl. And it was really pleasant yeah. for them to have her. Yeah. When I was over there and took pictures in uh, from Bergen, I took across the river. Well, there's seven islands in Bergen. And, she, and Nina jumped up and down. She said, oh, that's my grandma's house. That's my grandma's house. Really? Well, I didn't know I took anybody's house. Yeah. Well, well, there's a lot of little towns there, isn't there? I oh imagine yeah. just like our well, area. Well, I didn't for, forgot to tell you about uh, uh, Brevik. They had Sudnamite, just like we do here in Spring Grove. Oh, the town, Brevik? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there they had cattle, all had bells on and ribbons and flowers and stuff. They hung around their necks and stuff and walked in the parade with the people. It was so oh. cute. But then late in the afternoon, it rained there too, like we do here in Spring Grove. <laughs> 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 True to form, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. And I met, I met a, a relative. He said he was a relative. He was a, his name was Ole Brevik, and he was a missionary in Ethiopia during his young life. And we were invited to his house for supper, but Beverly said, I don't think we should intrude on him. He's just lost his wife. So we didn't go to his house for dinner. Hmm. I think I got my glasses dirty. So, or what were some of the foods, Mom, that you ate over in Norway? <clears throat> well, we had good food all the time. Did you? Do you yeah. have some favorites? Well, I tell you, every place we went, we <laughs> got full breakfast, every meal for breakfast. So, we ate good for breakfast and we didn't bother until the afternoon. Well, did they eat like we do? I mean, the same food? Oh. I thought they had really different foods. Uh, well, some of it was different, but we stayed with Beverly all the time. Oh, so, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. She stayed at the embassy and all that. Yeah. She worked at the embassy all the yeah. time. Mm -hmm. And wa walked in at the embassy when one lady walked up to Bev and she says, I bet this is your mother. Mm -hmm.